There have been a lot of comments asking for a stable diffusion prompting guide. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview on how I design a prompt in stable diffusion. Now, one thing I wanna remind you is how prompting in stable diffusion is very different from prompting in a tool like ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a single tool with a fixed set of features while Stable Diffusion is like a toolbox. You can use different models, different LoRa's, and even additional networks, and all of this affects how you prompt. To prove my point, this is one of my favorite animation generation models, Mianimix. You can see this model's main objective is to be able to do good art with very little prompting, but that's not the same way a model like Deliberate operates. In the model page itself, you can see how it says you need to have some knowledge in prompting to get better results. So with that in mind, let's get to the tutorial. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're typing long paragraphs for the prompts or just a couple of words. One rule that matters is how much detail you provide. The more details you provide, the more accurate the output becomes. Remember that. So here, if I just type woman, all you get is this picture of a woman with incorrect details. But now think of how we can detail this more. What we have typed in this prompt is the subject. Now it's time to start detailing that subject. Now, when detailing the subject, the, the easiest way to follow is to detail that subject from top to bottom. The order of keywords doesn't really play a major role when generating art with most models, but in case you wanna change this prompt later, this will really help you out. Keep that in mind, I'm gonna explain any female character from top to bottom. I wanna give her black hair, then I want her to wear glasses, I want her to wear a blue skirt, black shorts, and high heel shoes. There you go. Now Stable Fusion has more detail as to what you want to be generated. If you give Stable Diffusion a basic prompt like this, about 95% of the time it can be very accurate. Sure, the model you use can affect the quality, but since most of these models are trained on the original Stable Diffusion model, this can work really, really well. But wait, I know we're not addressing the elephant in the room, her face. You can see her face isn't really the best, so I'm gonna switch to hires.fix and do another generation. If you don't know what hires.fix is, then you should know I've done a complete video on how to correct faces where I gave three methods on how to correct your faces while going into detail with these settings. So make sure you check that all out. Anyway, here's our image with hires.fix on and you can see that the face is all right and they've stuck to the prompt we provided. Now that we have the basic art and we know that this prompt is successful in generating a good character, it's time to think about what we don't want. In the image we generated, we can see that her hands are in her pockets. But in most cases, your hands are going to be very, very bad. Or in some cases, you're gonna have a missing body part, extra body parts, and a lot of abominations. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's frustrating. This is where the negative prompts come into play. Negative prompts say what we don't want in our art. And in most cases, it's really difficult to specify what we don't want in our art. This is one negative prompt right here, that you don't need art in worse quality, low quality, a comic style, and you don't need zombie-like characters. Or here's another negative prompt that says you don't need a simple background. But in some cases, like when creating concept art, it's nice to have a simple background. So here is my trick. Keep worse quality and low quality keywords right here and just type the flaws you notice during your previous generations. Since I haven't done enough generations, I'll type what I usually find as flaws during my generations. Most of the time, flaws in your images include text, a simple background, if you're not generating concept art, missing fingers or extra fingers, in some cases NSFW art or even watermarks in your artwork. These are what we don't need. Now, if I keep these and hit generate, we get a character with a really weird face, but at least the art doesn't have what we mentioned. It's really great to have these prompts saved, so make sure to hit that save button and save the prompts. Now that we've created a character, added in those little details, what we needed, now we can either add more details, like we want a necklace, rings, or a belt, or we can jump straight into generating the stuff surrounding the character. This means background, weather, location, as well as the camera angle of the shot. In this case, I want it to happen in the evening. I want it to be happening on a rainy day, and I want the woman to be in the streets, and it should be shot from the side. Let's make it the side. Now, look at this prompt. I've included all of these details. Evening is the time, rainy and cloudy sky keywords are for the weather, and the next is the background and the camera angle. All right, let's hit generate. Now, just in case anybody's wondering why I skipped the part where the image is being generated, that's because hires.fix consumes almost all of my VGA and I cannot screen record during that time. Last time I did, I had to almost restart my computer and do everything from the beginning. Anyway, this is my generation and it's pretty good. It's followed the instructions, it's got cloudy skies, the camera angles, and all of that. We still have a problem with her face, but you can correct that by controlling the weight of the hires.fix or doing a couple more generations. 
apart from that, we've also got a bit of wonky backgrounds. And for that, I find that the best choice is to have a simple background, like insides of a bedroom or like a coffee shop or something like that. Or you could do a couple more generations and put any repeating elements into the negative prompts. Now, there's still one big problem. When I meant rainy, I wanted raindrops. So what can we do to get raindrops into this picture? There are two ways we can approach this. Let's try the first way. One, we increase the weight of the keyword. Increasing the weight of a keyword gives more focus to that keyword. So if I select the keyword rainy, then hit control and the up arrow, I can increase the weight of the keyword. I keep it at a 1.2 and hit generate. All right, this is our result, but we still got no raindrops. Then in that case, we're gonna need to follow the second step. I'm gonna take this rainy keyword and expand it. This means that I'm gonna put more keywords like raindrops, rainy day, rain, so I can give Stable Diffusion a better idea of what I want. All right, hit generate, and yeah, we got an umbrella sticking out of our head, but you can see we've got some tiny raindrops in here. Now, Lyriel is a model trained on realistic art, and it's very difficult to capture a concept like rain on realistic models. So why don't we switch to a comic book model? Here we've loaded in Comic Babes, and I've done a complete tutorial on generated comic book art as well. So if you love comic book art, like I do, make sure you check that out. Anyways, here we go. I hit the generate button, and there we have it. Now you can see we've got nice raindrops, and anyone seeing this picture can see that there's rain going on. But we still do got problems. One, no one asked for an umbrella. Two, this picture is shot from the side. Well, now you should have knowledge on how to handle this situation. How? Just put the umbrella keyword in the negative prompts and increase the weight of the shot from front keyword. I'm also going to remove the hires.fix since I want to save a bit of time, especially now that you know how that works. And there you go. Now we've got a very nice art without an umbrella and shot from the front. Now let's go and check this art with our prompt. We've got a woman. She's got black hair. She's wearing glasses. She's wearing a blue shirt. She's got black shorts and she's got high heel shoes as all requested. And it's evening. At least you can't prove it since it's raining, but I added that keyword just to show you where to include the time in case you want it. And then we've got rain, the cloudy sky, the street background, and it's shot from the front. So that's it. You can see I followed our prompt perfectly. Now you can send it to InPainting, or you can copy the seed and generate it with hires.fix, or even send this to image to image for some improvements. So that's my basic prompting. We learned how to generate characters, how to add details, when to add negative prompts, how to control weather, camera angles, and all that stuff and then about the weights of those keywords. Thanks for watching everyone. Always make sure to like and subscribe if you love my content. There's another video on prompting coming up very soon, so stay tuned for that too. That's it for today, AI gang, and I'll see you in the next video.